Hello again, everybody. Yeah. Uh, I hope you enjoyed your lunch. Yeah, this has been an, uh, an exciting forum uh, for all of us. Uh, it's been like a big tech, like, yeah, there's a lot we have to learn from the South African perspective. Uh, today I stand before you. Uh, I really enjoyed the presentations from yesterday. There have been the in-class presentations, they have been very exciting, and today we had the cast presentations. Uh, we had a very exciting uh, panel discussion uh, involving the regulator and the Paris machine. So it was quite an experience, I mean it was quite an uh, experience sharing for all of us. So uh, I'm here also to share where we began in Tanzania, the challenges that we met where we come from and where we are now. So before I go on, I have a few things to share with you. The telecommunication sector was liberalized in Tanzania uh, in the year 1993. So before that, we had a state-owned telecommunication company and a state-owned broadcasting station. So from there, private operators were allowed in the country of liberalization. So back in the 90s, uh, especially in 1993, the regulatory authority, or at that time it was called Tanzania Communication Commission, granted a license to a private operator. So at that time, the licenses were tied to technologies. Like you give a 2G license, a fixed line license, a broadcast license, etc. So I'll try to share with you what happened in 19. We, we, we had a dispute uh, that I can read from the internet. Uh, there's a special uh, new segment uh, that was published in the uh, 12th of August in 2001. So you listen and then I'll progress with my presentation. <coughs> Members of Tanzania Parliament have been have been informed that the North GSM network monitor has been operating without a valid cellular license for the past seven years. The opposition Minister of Communications and Transport made allegations last week, adding that the company was also evading taxes by not paying duty on imported GSM infrastructure. Monitor is in dispute with the government at the moment over the alleged failure to hand back to the telecoms regulator and used <coughs> and used radio spectrum so that it can be allocated to set a new entrance to the market. The minister also says that the company is operating a cellular license thanks to a court order and has not formally received an operating license from the telecoms regulator. So these were challenges that we faced there. So how did we begin? So let me take you through my presentation and we share the experience and see how we move forward and where we are right now. Okay? So you can see the exponential growth in voice uh, telephone subscription. And you can see eventually the depth of fixed line uh, communication in Tanzania. So from around 2 million, or 2.9 million up to 28 subscriptions in 2014. So this is quite significant. Okay, so these are voice telephone users and the internet users. These are statistics. They talk for themselves. progressed from the year 2005 and 
out to now. Like what happened in 2005? So following problems that we had with the, with the monetary company uh, that had all the spectrum, almost the entire spectrum, GSM spectrum, and uh, after the pilot was taken on board, a uh, new law had to be uh, enacted to empower the government uh, to be able to regulate the regular free spectrum. There was a major policy revolution in the country in 2003. Excuse me, maybe I should. So now I'll take you through my presentation. Uh, the agenda is background. I'll go to the regulatory panel. Why is it important? Spectrum planning and assignment. Uh, in kind of operators, when you have change or any transition, what do you do with kind of operators? Planning for spectrum sharing. A lot has been said that we have new services, new technologies, uh, such as TV white space. So we'll see what happens. We have statistics and then I'll conclude. So as I said earlier, we had major policy reforms in the country. So in 2003, after all the problems that we had, uh, we had a new policy, it was reviewed. So the national ICT policy of 2003, the national information broadcasting policy of 2003. And as a result, we had to converge. So we had separate regulatory bodies, one for content and uh, another one for communication services. So it was necessary that they converge and work together. Uh, also the broadcasting side, the Tanzania Broadcasting Commission will give you a license to operate a content service provider, as a, as a content service provider. And the TCC or the Tanzania Communication Commission will give you a spectrum. So there was no coordination between these two uh, regulatory bodies. So the TCRA Act, uh, which established the authority, which is a complete authority. So how did we go? We adopted the competitive framework. It was necessary. So we thought like it doesn't work. Having licenses tied to technologies was quite cumbersome uh, to be able to, to allow the industry to boom. Uh, so in 2005, we introduced the combat licensing framework with four main licenses. So the first one is to be able to build a network infrastructure. Any network infrastructure, maybe towers, uh, maybe a fiber network, maybe an air station. So we, whichever infrastructure. Uh, that you do as a content, you give a national, or I mean, you give a network facility license. Network service for, for provision of uh, uh, telecommunication services, application services uh, for services such as internet and other applications like uh, mobile money transfer, and lastly, content services license. So, those are four main licenses within the company. So within that one also, uh, we introduced four market segments. So the first one is international, like for those ones who operate the gateways, national, regional, and district. So we want the inclusivity for local and small players as well. So those ones uh, are given license license. And we have a four-time uh, system for the we have the public, we have the commission, we have the non-commission, and community service in South Africa. So what we see as opportunity in the conventional sense of framework. So we believe that it promotes innovation and masses in technology services. But 
I mean, uh, at this time of the introduction of this uh, category of, uh, of licensed development, an incumbent operator, let's say, uh, let's say uh, a mobile operator, does not need a new license, does not need to go through the houses uh, of applying for a new license if they have to upgrade their networks. A good example is the introduction of 3G in the country. They didn't need to go for the license. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't not go to, the, to, to, to all the houses and get some the license. All they had to do was to upgrade their networks, come and do a presentation to the regulatory authority, and then we give them go ahead. So we believe uh, it gives consumers a choice uh, because you have a number of operators competing, and uh, because you allow innovation. So compute that I mean consumers have choice, diversity, and the services, uh, services become affordable. <coughs> so it eradicates the service urbanization and balance. Because if you have a uh, district license, it means like uh, you, you have all those balances, especially under certain areas as the authority and you decide to give them a priority. Okay, market segments promote competition, that's what I've said. In 2010, uh, we, uh, the Parliament of Tanzania enacted a new law, uh, electronic and post communication law, which embraced the digital migration. So, under this one, we had the digital and other broadcasting networks regulation 2010. And the arriving frequency regulations 2011, which now empower the authority to be able to regulate uh, the spectrum efficiently on a converged uh, environment. So it removes all the problems that we had previously, like all the court cases and litigations. And because now we have all the powers to be able to balance and to see where the industry is going, we can retrieve the frequencies. Uh, we can do the farming uh, to be able to, to make the, uh, the industry grow. The challenge is that we believe it doesn't give room for reassignment of spectrum for new technologies. So like we, we, uh, we, we have about four major players in Tanzania that we are granted uh, network facilities license, network services license to operate mobile. Services. So they, they have a GSM, they are holding the 9 megahertz, I mean 900 megahertz frequency uh, using the GSM technology and the 3G. So we, we have new technologies coming up, like the 4G and the 5G. So we believe, like, uh, because the CRF, the Convention License Framework, is technology and uh, service neutral. We don't have the powers to be able to tell these people to vacate uh, those banks and deploy the new technologies. So it may lead to collusion among operators and kind of operators to, to prevent competition. Okay, so the second will be spectrum management. As I said earlier, the Electronic and Post Publication Act 2010 empowers the authority to manage the radio the spectrum. So we have planning and assignments you can use to start that out with the legislation. Uh, and regulating the airwaves, uh, we have the Electronic and Post Publications, Radio Communications, and Frequency Spectrum Regulations of 2011. So previously we had the 2005 regulations which we had to review uh, following sector development. So it was time to first come, first said, and I mean, uh, at that time we, we believe that this one will work better. And then later, uh, uh, we believe that it lacks uh, good governance and So we decided to go for the grid contest, uh, which uh, is a competitive tenor process for high demand uh, spectrum. So 
this has been used in the implementation of digital terrestrial broadcasting. And it has been adopted effectively at the last month in Tanzania. So with a with beauty contest, how do we choose uh, the best operator or the candidate for, uh, for the spectrum, the competitive spectrum? So roll out commitments. There should be credibility and financial capabilities, including technical capabilities of the applicant. So and how the applicant has to roll out and the very best can fit with the authorities. And we have the public interest considerations as well. We have the invitation to apply, which has, uh, has also been uh, adopted effectively last month. After relying on the campus first assignment uh, mechanism. So what do we see as opportunities? So it, attract, it attracts uh, credible investments in the country. It promotes transparency and uh, good governance. And we also believe that the invitation to apply promotes transparency and universal service obligations. So it means that you study, you go to the underserved areas where there are no services. So the, uh, the regular folks should conduct a study by ability and to see which services require those services. And then we announce eligible companies to apply uh, for the licenses. So the challenge is that we see that we give uh, room for the assignment of spectrum based on technologies. So again, it may lead to uh, collusion for capital competitive banks uh, by existing uh, service uh, licenses. So it may prevent new entrants with new ideas. So the new regulations empower the authority to do spectrum refining. And what can trigger, what can, uh, what can lead to, uh, to refining obsolete technology, of course, and expired license. Uh, for example, the, the first some that I mentioned earlier that we had monitored, uh, they had deployed I mean, the analog technology, the cellular technology. And immediately there was digital technology, GSM technology involved. So it was not easy for the authority uh, to be able to accommodate. So the current regulations empower us uh, to be able to perform such activities. There's overriding public interest. Uh, changes in technologies and services like the DD1. And the affected parties are given adequate notes, and new licenses pay for the cost of expense. So, frequency coordination uh, this is an important aspect uh, of uh, <coughs> radio communication uh, regulation. What do we do with the market operators? the best practice of what we did. So you have to protect the incumbent and the investments. There should be seamless transition and consumers have to be protected. They, they, don't, they don't have to see that change. They don't have to be affected. The services don't have to be disrupted. So the best practice in 2005 after adoption of conventional licensing framework, the existing licenses were protected. So they were given provisional licenses uh, and they were given enough time to prepare and migrate to a new licensing framework. So during the migration from analog to digital broadcasting, we, we had a consultation process, a very long one, between 2005 and 2009. So we involved the key stakeholders, which are broadcasters. And uh, it was actually resolved that they have to take part in migration. They have to be part of the process. 
So what's happening in the United States? The stakeholder decided that we should have three carriers. So one should be tied with the public broadcaster uh, because of its mandate to give services to the public. So they decided that there should be two other carriers for competition. So one was through a public private partnership, which is public broadcaster, uh, and a foreign company, and the rest of the two were consortium of existing broadcasters. So the tender was floated, and they eventually won and got the license. Must care be for five uh, national local operators uh, in the broadcasting sector. People were used to free services, free to air services. And then in the paradigm change during the rollout of these broadcasting, the public complained like, how, how do we pay? How do we go from the uh, free service that we used to pay <coughs> and start paying for the broadcasting sector? So we had to innovate in the regulator. So we decided to mask for five national local operators on all three carriers, and that is as public relations. So we have spectrum sharing. There have been an uh, exciting and very interesting uh, presentation on the TV workspace. So we, we are undertaking studies on spectrum sharing now, uh, except the TV white space. And I think I would like to, uh, to add to my fellow regulators in Africa, like to uh, to have a section that uh, deals with R&D, research and development, uh, within the policy makers. It's, it's quite important uh, to look at these uh, new services uh, and develop uh, appropriate uh, licensing regimes uh, for social and economic benefits. So regional harmonization, uh, it's, it's very important. Uh, now we, uh, we have ATU, uh, we have the SADC, we have the East African Commission <laughs> And I believe uh, this will catalyze the development of the sector as within the African region. So we have regulations that allow the authorities, as I said earlier, to reply the farm and the market and the assigned sector based on public interest, uh, social and economic developments, new innovations. Uh, we have about 18 regulations uh, from uh, the spectrum the same area. Competition, uh, interconnection, all these have made the industry go in Tanzania. So I'll take you through the statistics. So we have three national DTT carriers, three multiplexes each in every service area of the country. The analog switch off, uh, switch -off is ongoing. Uh, we, we have only six transmitters to switch off remain in the country, so we are going to make the analog switch, uh, uh, ITU analog switch deadline in, uh, uh, on 17th June 2015. We have about 93 FM radio stations, uh, about four DTH service providers. Uh, there's one IPTV, uh, because of the uh, convert licensing framework that we have, uh, it's very easy to license any any say uh, that, 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 that the applicant may come uh, and apply for the country. So we have about 16 cable operators, and we have initiatives, uh, initiatives uh, ongoing currently, uh, moderate regulation of social media networks. So we involve them now uh, for voluntary registration, registration training and staff regulations. Okay, so those are statistics that you can go through this uh, presentation and see for yourself uh, how far we have gone uh, between 2005 and now. So I'd like to conclude. What do we think are the drivers for the, for the development, for what we have done? You can see for yourself the statistics from 2.9 million in 2005 to 38 million subscribers. 
And I can say that this is more than half of the population of the country. So we have licensed DTT under competition under uh, the existing regulatory framework. So the DTT fitted very well. Uh, there was a national network of facilities uh, for the three carriers. And the broadcasters are given content service provide the license which is within the current license uh, framework. So the DTT and DTH, we have over 1.5 million subscribers uh, in the television industry. The radio administration is close to 98%, uh, thanks for the FM uh, technology in the country. Democrats, people democratized, uh, people have access to information. Yeah, from telecommunications data. Yeah. They enjoy a variety of services like uh, voice, mobile transfer, data, etc. Et so we have increased innovation in application services where we have more than 90 uh, application service licenses in the country and uh, providing various variety of services uh, in the country. So increased use of broadband services. We have 18 pieces of uh, self regulations by state behavior and the employment boom in the sector. I would like to thank you for listening to me. And this is a forum, and uh, uh, I felt like it's a good way of uh, sharing your experience. So let's discuss. Thank you. Thank you very much.